Here's the big challenge of life. You can have more than you've got because you can become more than you are. That's the challenge. And, of course, the other side of the coin reads, unless you change how you are, you'll always have what you got. I have found in my experience that income does not far exceed personal development. Now, sometimes income takes a lucky jump, but sure enough, unless you grow out where it is, it'll usually come back where you are. Life has a strange way. If somebody hands you a million dollars, it's best you become a millionaire quickly so you get to keep the money. Otherwise, sure enough, it'll disappear. Somebody once said, if you took all the money in the world, divided it up equally among everybody, it would soon all be back in the same pockets. Incredible success is something you attract, not something you pursue. Success is looking for a good place to stay. So, instead of going after it, you work on yourself, personal development. The major question to ask on the job is not, where are you getting? The major question to ask on the job is, where are you becoming? The big question is not, what am I getting paid here? The big question is, what am I becoming here? Because true happiness is not contained in what you get. Happiness is contained in what you become. So, that's our major subject for tonight, personal development. Of all the assignments Mr. Schaefer gave me at age 25, this was probably the most difficult. In fact, I'm still working on this one. I think it's an unending challenge to see what you can become. The next subject is called basic laws, and it's good to study the basics. I call these basics primarily because they come from the Bible. Now, I'm not a theologian or a minister, that'll be apparent, but Mr. Schaefer taught me that the Bible was a good textbook for ideas and stories and a success equation, how to live the better life. I found out that was true. He also taught me that the Bible is as practical as it is spiritual, and I found out that's true. If you look at your bank account and your income, and you're not happy, there's several places in the Bible to check to see what the heck's wrong so you can make the changes. And we're going to cover some of those tonight, called basics. Okay, the next subject is my favorite, setting goals. Mr. Schaefer taught me how to set goals. What a favor that was. One more morning of breakfast, shortly after I met him, he said, Jim, let me see your current list of goals, and let's go over and talk about them. He said, maybe that's the best way I can help you get a better direction. And I said, I don't have a list. He said, well, is it out in the car or home somewhere? I said, no, sir, I don't have a list anywhere. He said, well, young man, that's where we've got to start. He said, I can tell you right now, if you don't have a list of your goals with you, I can guess your bank balance within a few hundreds, which he did. And that got my attention. I said, you mean my bank balance would change if I had a list of goals? He said, drastically. That day, I became a willing student of how to set goals, and sure enough, learning how to set goals changed my life. I often wondered why no one had ever taught me how to set goals. Up until age 25, I went to high school, but if they offered it, I missed it. I went to college for a year, never heard it. I worked for Sears, and to my knowledge, Sears never taught it. Right, how to set goals. So here I am, age 25, all right, my family's starting, I've been to college, I'm working, and I still don't know how to set goals. But fortunately, when I was 25, I met the man who taught me how, and it revolutionized my whole life economically, socially, personally. It's incredible. So I want to share with you tonight what Mr. Schaefer shared with me. How to set goals. You can be a life changer. Okay, the next subject is the negative. Life is part negative, so we've got to talk about the negative, and this subject is called diseases of attitude. There's a lot of things that can wreck your chances to do well. We live in a rather dangerous world, so you've got to be not only wise, you've got to be careful. Attitude diseases are just as bad as physical diseases, right? High blood pressure, heart trouble, I mean, a lot of things slice your chances to do well. So, you've got to be careful, and attitude diseases are deadly. I mean, they'll destroy all the good things you start, okay? So we'll go through those attitude diseases. How to spot them, how to look for them, what they are, and the cure. And I'm a pro on these cause I've had them all, so I can give you excellent advice on this. The last subject we're going to consider tonight is, the day that turns your life around. And under this subject, we're going to talk about the emotions that can change your life. Human beings are emotion creatures, and emotions are powerful for life change. Now, of course, emotions are so powerful, they can go either way on you. Emotions can either build or destroy, so you really have to employ emotions properly. 
We call civilization the intelligent management of human emotions. Intelligently apply your emotions in the right direction. No telling what can happen. It could turn your life around one day. Would be sufficient. I'd like to have you now jot down the theme of the seminar. Every seminar should have a theme. I guess we've got one. Some of our literature if you happen to notice it, but if you didn't, for your notes. Here it is. The theme of the seminar goes like this. The major key to your better future is you. That's the theme of our seminar tonight. The major key to your better future is you. And I'd like to have you underline two words. Underline the word, major, and the word, you. The major key to your better future is now. My first suggestion is to transfer this to a card or something where you can put it up where you can see it every day. Preferably, put it up where you can see it at the beginning of the day, before you go out and put the day together. This is a good phrase just to glance at. Keep in mind as you're putting the day together. It's called, the silent seminar. If you'll just let this talk to you during the day, I found it to be tremendously helpful. The major key to your better future is you. For a picture of my life. Now, I didn't have this one quite figured out. Among a lot of things, I didn't have quite figured out. Many things used to puzzle me back in those early days. I used to wonder why two people could work for the same company. One make twice as much money. Now, see, that used to puzzle me. And maybe they were the same age, graduated from the same school, lived in the same community, worked for the same company, with the same products, and the same services. They've got the same traffic, the same problems, and one makes $1,000 a month, the other one makes $2,000. Why would one person do twice as well, three times as well, speaking economically now? I know there's more than one way to do well, I understand that. But in this little narrow area called compensation, what's the difference? Well, back then, with my faulty thinking, I'm trying to reason it out. I thought, well, maybe time makes some of the difference, right? Some people do better because they have more time. I used to say, Harold ought to be able to do well, he's got a lot of time. If I had all of Harold's time, I could do well. Now, that's got to be dumb, right? Number one, you can't get somebody else's time. The guy says to me one time, he says, you know, if I had some extra time, I could make some extra money. I said, then forget it, there isn't any extra time. Hey, when the clock strikes till midnight, that about wraps it up, right? I mean, you can look around the gongs there for a little more, but it's over. You say to the guy, what are you doing? He said, I'm looking for extra time. See, they'll come and take you away, right? There isn't any more time. Now, if you can't get more time, what could you get more of that would make a difference in economic results? And here's the keyword, make it a part of your notes, value. And I have a little phrase for your notes. Value makes the difference in results. Value makes the difference. You can't get more time, but you can create more value. Here's the first lesson of economics everybody should learn. From the time old enough to understand what a dollar means, how to earn one, how to get one, how to keep one, what to do with it. First lesson of economics. We primarily get paid for value. That's lesson one. Bringing value to the marketplace. That's how you get paid. You don't get paid for the time. I know it takes time to bring value to the marketplace, but you get paid for the value, not the time. Now, since that's true, here's one of the key questions of the evening. Is it possible to become twice as valuable at the marketplace and make twice as much money in the same time? Could you become three times as valuable, make three times as much money in the same? Is that possible? The answer is yes, if. And it's always if, right? Life is known as the big if. Harry Truman once said, life is iffy. Not true. And here's the big if we're going to consider it tonight. It's possible to do much better at the marketplace if you go to work primarily on yourself. And that's the theme of our seminar tonight. Learning to work primarily on yourself. People have asked me for the last 24 years, how do you develop an above average income? And the answer is, become an above average person. Develop an above average handshake. Some people want to be successful. They don't even work on their handshake as easy as that would be to start on, and they let it slide. They don't understand. Develop an above average smile. Develop an above average excitement. Develop an above average interest in other people. Develop an above average intensity to win. See, that'll change everything. Probably one of the most frustrating experiences in life is looking for an above average job with above average pay without becoming an above average person. 
It's called frustration. And Mr. Shof gave me probably the greatest clue he gave me when I first met him. He said, Jim, if you want to be wealthy and happy the rest of your life, just learn this lesson well. He said, learn to work harder on yourself than you do on your job. And he had these interesting questions to ask. I'm giving him a little rundown one day on how things hadn't worked out for me. They said, Mr. Ron, I've got the answer for you if you will listen carefully, and listen carefully. I did that day and for the next five years. If somebody's wealthy and happy, you got to listen. He said, Jim, I've only known you a short time, but he said it's already my honest opinion that for things to change for you, you got to change. That wasn't quite the answer I was looking for, but that's the answer he gave me, and I pass it along to you. For things to change for you, you got to change. Otherwise, it isn't going to change. Before I met Mr. Shove, I used to say, I sure hope things will change, right? That seemed to be my only hope. If it isn't going to change, I'm in serious trouble. And then I discovered, it isn't going to change, so I'm in serious trouble. E, I can tell you. I did a seminar one time for Standard Oil Executives and Management in Ann Arbor, and we're having a conference one day on this big conference table, and one of them said to me, Mr. Ron, you know some fairly important people halfway around the world. What do you think the 80s are going to be like? I said, gentlemen, I do know the right people, I can tell you. So they all listened very carefully, and I said, gentlemen, based on my wide experience, I can really honestly say to you, in my opinion, in the 80s, it's going to be about like it's always been. It isn't going to change. The tide comes in and then it goes out for six and a half thousand years that we know of recorded history, and probably long before that. So it is not going to change. And we're not to be startled by that. And if the sun goes down, and the guy says, what's happened? What's happened? It means he hasn't been here long, I guess. Right? It always goes down about this time. The guy says, well, I don't like that arrangement. Well, you've got to talk to somebody besides me, right? It gets light, and then it turns dark in rotation. The next season after fall is what? Winter, pray tell. How often does winter fall? Fall every year, regularly for the last six and a half thousand years that we know of. See, it is not going to change. Now, some winters are long, and some are short, and some are hard, and some are easy, but they always come right after falls. It isn't going to change. Sometimes you can figure it out, and sometimes there's no way to figure it out. Sometimes it goes well, sometimes it gets in a knot, sometimes it sails along, sometimes it gets in reverse. See, that's not going to change. For the last six and a half thousand years, he reads like this. Opportunity mixed with difficulty. That's how it reads. It isn't going to change. The man says, well, if it isn't going to change, how will my life ever change? The answer, when you change. And whether I'm talking to high school kids or business executives, my message is always the same, and it goes like this. The only way it gets better for you is when you get better. Let me give you the four major lessons in life to learn. Here are four majors. It's good to study the majors. In our weekend seminar, we teach that some people don't do well because they major in minor things. You've got to be on the lookout at the end of every weekend, of every month. Yes, you've got to check. Make sure you're not spending major time on minor things. And we go through that whole series, majors and minors. Now, let me give you two phrases before we get to the four majors. This will set it up, and you'll see where I'm going. Two key phrases for your notes. Here's the first one. Life and business are like changing seasons. That's the first phrase. Life and business are like changing seasons. One of the best ways to describe life is like the seasons. Now, here's the second phrase. Very important. You cannot change the seasons, but you can change yourself. You can't change the seasons, but you can change yourself. And see, that's how life gets better for you. Not by chance, but by change. Now, here are the four major lessons in life to learn. I got my first book finished, came out a couple of weeks ago. This is in it, the four major lessons in life to learn. Here they are. Number one, learn how to handle the winters. That's lesson one. They come right after falls with regularity. Some are long and some are short and some are hard and some are easy, but they keep coming. You must learn to handle the winters. They come right after days. You must learn to handle difficulty. It comes right after opportunity. You must learn to handle recessions. They always follow progressions. For the last 6,000 years, it isn't going to change. The lesson you must learn is how to handle it. And there's all kinds of winters. 
The winter when you can't figure it out. The winter when it all goes smash. The winter when it turns belly up. The winter when it won't work. When you run out of money and you've got a broken heart. E. Those are winter times. Those are normal. That's part of life. But the question is, how do you handle it? How do you handle the coming winters and the disappointments and the down times? Well, you can't get rid of January by tearing it off the calendar. But here's what you can do. You can get stronger, you can get wiser, and you can get better. The winters won't change, but you can. And that's how life changes for you. See, before I understood, when it was winter, I used to wish it was summer. I didn't understand. When it was hard, I used to wish it was easy. I didn't know. And then Mr. Shof gave me a part of his very unique philosophy when he said, Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. See, that triggered my whole life change. Don't wish for less problems. Wish for more skills. Don't wish for less challenge. Wish for more wisdom. That's the key. So, that's lesson one. Learn how to handle the winters. Here's lesson two. Learn how to take advantage of the spring. That's the second one. Spring is called opportunity, and spring follows winter. What a great place for it. If you were going to put it somewhere, that would be the place to put it. Right after winter. And pray tell, how often does spring follow winter? Every year, with regularity. You can almost count on it. See, opportunity always comes. Days follow nights. Isn't that terrific? Opportunity follows difficulty. But here's what you must learn to do. Underline these two words in that key phrase, take advantage. You must learn to take advantage of the spring. T, just because spring rolls around, there's no sign you're going to look good. You've got to do something with it. In fact, you have to get good at one of two things in life. Planting in the spring or begging in the fall. Or get somebody to do it for you. Here's what else you must do. Take advantage of the springs quickly, because there's only a few. Just a handful of springs have been handed to each of us. They don't come forever. Life is fairly brief. So, you've got to read every book you can get your hands on about what to do with your springs while they're here and take advantage. They soon run out. The Beatles wrote, life is so short. And for John Lennon, it was extra short. But life is brief. Alton John sings, she lived her life like a candle in the wind. It's brief. So, whatever you're going to do with your life, you've got to get at it. Don't just let the springs pass. Here's the third major lesson in life to learn. Learn how to protect your crops all summer. You got to take care of what you start. Sure enough, as soon as you planted your garden in the spring, the busy bugs and the noxious weeds head out to take it. And here's the next bit of truth. They will take it unless you prevent it. And that's the third major skill to learn. You've got to learn to prevent the intruder from taking all the good you started. It's one of the challenges. Here are two key phrases on the third. First one. All good will be attacked on this planet. Maybe not the next one we get to. And on this one, all good will be attacked. Every garden will be invaded. Not to think so is naive. And here's the second phrase. All values must be defended. Political values, social values, community values, family values, marriage values, friendship values, business values. Every garden must be tended all summer. That's the third major lesson. Now, here's number four. Fourth major lesson in life to learn. Learn how to reap in the fall without complaint. Learn to reap come harvest time without complaint. Take full responsibility for what happens to you. It's one of the highest forms of human maturity, accepting full responsibility. Here's the day you know you've passed from childhood to adulthood. The day you accept full responsibility. And another note. Learn to reap in the fall without apology, if you do well, and without complaint if you don't. That's maturity. I used to have that long list of reasons why I wasn't doing well. You've got to explain, otherwise you're going to look bad. I used to have this funny list called, reasons for not looking good. I used to blame everything outside. And then let me give you a little philosophy to help turn my life around. For your notes, here it is. It's not what happens that determines the quality or the quantity of your life. It's not what happens. And the reason is because what happens happens to about everybody. No different. The sun went down on all this last night. A common event. A happening. And I found out that the same things can happen to two different people. One gets rich, and one stays poor. Why is that? Except because it's not what happens, but rather, it's what you do that changes everything. So that's a key phrase. It's not what happens, it's what you do. What happens is about the same. You might put that in parenthesis here, same.
What people do, that's what's different. Anything can happen, right? Everything can happen. It's not the weather. I used to blame the weather. I discovered it rains on the ridge. So, see, that won't help. Two men wake up one morning, there's a rainstorm. One of them looks out his window, sees the rainstorm, and he says, Wow, what a storm. With weather like this, they can't expect you to go out and make sales. He stays home. Same morning, the other guy looks out his window, sees the same storm, says, Wow, what a storm. But he says, You know what? With weather like this, what a great day to go out and make sales. Most everybody will probably be home, especially the sales. See, that's the difference in how your life works out. It's not what happens, it's what you do. So, here's one of the key questions of the evening. Starting tomorrow, what are you going to do that'll make a change in your life's direction? Good question. What are you going to do starting tomorrow that'll make a difference? See, if you don't do something starting tomorrow that'll make a difference, guess what? It's going to be the same. In that way, you can guess what the next five years are going to be like. Look at the last five, because the next five are going to be like the last five unless you make a change. Tomorrow, change it all or change a little or change something, or don't change. It's choice time. You can do whatever you want. But it's nice to know any day you wish, you can change your whole life. Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to stand before you today and share some timeless wisdom on the incredible journey of self-improvement. I've dedicated my life to understanding the principles that lead to success and fulfillment. Today, I want to offer you a roadmap, a set of self-improvement tips that can transform your life if you choose to embrace them. Tip 1. Set clear goals. The first step on the path to self-improvement is setting clear, compelling goals. Goals give you a destination, a purpose, and something to strive for. Without them, you're like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the vast sea of life. Take the time to define what you want to achieve in your personal and professional life. Make your goals specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Create a roadmap for your success. Tip 2. Personal development is the key. Invest in yourself. The late, great Earl Schaff, my mentor, once said, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Personal development is the key to unlocking your full potential. Read books, attend seminars, listen to podcasts, and surround yourself with people who inspire and challenge you. Remember, your income can only grow to the extent that you do. As you become more valuable, so will your opportunities. Tip 3. Take responsibility for your life. If you want to change your life, you must take responsibility for it. You are the captain of your ship, and the choices you make today will determine your tomorrow. Don't blame others for your circumstances. Instead, take charge and make the decisions that will shape your destiny. The power to change is within you, waiting to be unleashed. Tip 4. Cultivate a positive attitude. Your attitude is a powerful force that shapes your experiences. Cultivate a positive attitude even in the face of challenges. Life is not always easy, but your attitude determines how you navigate its twists and turns. Choose optimism over pessimism, gratitude over complaining, and resilience over defeat. A positive attitude is like a magnet. It attracts good things into your life. Tip 5. Embrace the power of consistency. Consistency is the key to success. It's not the big actions you take once in a while that make a difference. It's the small, consistent actions you take every day. Success is not an overnight phenomenon. It's a result of disciplined daily efforts. Develop positive habits and stick to them. Remember, it's not what you do once in a while that shapes your life. It's what you do consistently. Tip 6. Surround yourself with winners. You are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. If you want to soar, surround yourself with eagles. Choose friends, mentors, and colleagues who inspire you, challenge you, and support your journey of self-improvement. Iron sharpens iron, and when you associate with winners, you raise your own standards and increase your chances of success. Tip 7. Learn from failure. Failure is not the opposite of success, it's a part of it. Embrace failure as a valuable teacher on your path to greatness. Learn from your mistakes, adjust your course, and keep moving forward. Failure is not a dead end, it's a detour that can lead you to new opportunities and insights. Don't let fear of failure paralyze you, let it propel you to greater heights. Tip 8. Take care of your health. Your body is the vehicle for your journey in this life. Take care of it. Eat nutritious foods, exercise regularly, get enough sleep, and manage stress. 
A healthy body supports a healthy mind, and both are essential for sustaining success. Remember, you can have all the wealth in the world, but without health, it means nothing. Tip 9. Be a lifelong learner. The world is constantly evolving, and so should you. Be a lifelong learner, curious and open to new ideas. Stay informed about the changes in your industry, invest in acquiring new skills, and be adaptable. The more you learn, the more you can contribute, and the more opportunities you will discover. Tip 10. Practice Gratitude. Gratitude is a powerful force that can transform your life. Take a moment each day to reflect on the things you're grateful for. A grateful heart attracts more to be grateful for. Gratitude shifts your focus from what you lack to what you have, opening your eyes to the abundance that surrounds you. Now, imagine if you could have a mentor, a guide, a wise companion who has walked the path you aspire to tread. Imagine if you could glean insights from the greatest minds, draw lessons from the experiences of those who have faced adversity and triumphed. That, my friends, is the transformative power of books. First and foremost, books are the keys to unlocking the doors of knowledge. In this vast, ever-changing world, knowledge is the currency of progress. Books are the repositories of the collective wisdom of humanity, the treasure trove of insights waiting to be discovered. When you read, you tap into the accumulated knowledge of the ages, standing on the shoulders of giants who have shaped the course of history. Moreover, books are the catalyst for personal growth because they challenge your thinking and expand your perspective. They serve as mirrors, reflecting back to you the areas where you can improve, and windows, offering you glimpses into worlds you may never have imagined. Consider this. Every book is a condensed version of a lifetime of experiences and lessons. When you immerse yourself in the pages of a well-written book, you are absorbing the distilled essence of someone else's journey. You're learning from their successes and setbacks, gaining insights that can guide you through the complexities of your own life. Books also have the power to fuel your ambition and stoke the fires of your imagination. They introduce you to possibilities and potentialities that may have remained hidden otherwise. Through the pages of a book, you can explore new worlds, dream bigger dreams, and set audacious goals. In closing, my friends, let me leave you with this. Books are not mere collections of words on paper. They are mentors, guides, and companions on your journey of personal growth. They offer you the keys to the kingdom of knowledge, the wisdom of the ages condensed into chapters and verses. As you embark on the path of self-discovery, make books your allies. Let them be the mentors that propel you toward greatness. Remember, the person you will be in five years is largely determined by the books you read and the people you associate with. So, choose your mentors wisely, and let the timeless wisdom within the pages of books illuminate your path. The journey of personal growth is an ongoing adventure, and with books as your mentors, you hold the keys to unlocking the boundless potential that resides within you. Thank you, and may your reading journey be as transformative as mine has been. Ladies and gentlemen and seekers of greatness, I am honored to stand before you today to discuss one of the most profound principles that can shape the course of our lives. Wisdom. Wisdom is the application of knowledge. Let's embark on a journey where we unravel the essence of wisdom, dissect its profound meaning, and explore the transformative power it holds in our lives. Now, my friends, let's ponder upon this fundamental truth. Knowledge is potent, yes, but it's in the application of that knowledge that its true value is realized. Picture this. A farmer with a sack full of seeds possesses the knowledge of planting. But unless he steps into his fields and cultivates the land, those seeds will remain dormant, incapable of yielding a harvest. Similarly, it's not merely the possession of knowledge that elevates us, but it's the utilization of that knowledge that propels us towards success. Think about the scholars and visionaries throughout history. What set them apart wasn't merely their intelligence or vast knowledge, but their unwavering commitment to apply what they knew. Da Vinci, Edison, Einstein, and countless others, their brilliance lay not solely in their intellect, but in their relentless pursuit of applying their insights to innovate, create, and change the world. Imagine possessing the blueprints of a magnificent castle, the plans, the designs, the intricate details. But if these blueprints remain locked away, gathering dust on a shelf, the castle will never materialize. It's the labor, the effort, and the action of construction that bring those plans to life. In the same vein, knowledge is our blueprint, and wisdom is the castle we build when we actively apply that knowledge. Let me be crystal clear. 
Wisdom isn't merely about knowing things, it's about doing things. It's the bridge between information and action, between theory and practice. It's about taking what you've learned and infusing it into your decisions, your actions, and your life. Now, how do we unlock this wisdom within us? It begins with a thirst for knowledge, an insatiable hunger to learn and grow. Read, explore, seek mentors, attend seminars, devour information. This is the foundation upon which wisdom is built. However, don't let the pursuit of knowledge become a passive endeavor. It's not enough to collect facts and figures. You must translate that knowledge into action. Let me tell you a story. There was once a man who spent years studying the principles of health and fitness. He knew every exercise, every nutrition plan, every aspect of leading a healthy lifestyle. Yet he remained overweight and out of shape. Why? Because he failed to apply that knowledge. Wisdom eluded him because he didn't take the necessary steps to put his knowledge into practice. My friends, wisdom demands courage. The courage to step into the unknown, to take risks, to embrace failure as a stepping stone toward success. It requires persistence, the unwavering determination to keep going, to keep applying what you've learned despite setbacks or challenges. It necessitates adaptability, the willingness to evolve, to adjust your approach based on the lessons you've gained. Remember, wisdom isn't a destination, it's a lifelong journey. Each day presents us with opportunities to learn, grow, and apply what we've learned. It's in the small, consistent actions that wisdom flourishes and transforms our lives. So, as you embark on your journey armed with knowledge, let it not weigh you down as an idle possession, but lift you up as a catalyst for action. Apply what you know, take that first step, and let each subsequent step be guided by the wisdom you cultivate through application. In closing, my dear friends, let us embrace this truth. Wisdom is not found in the vast accumulation of knowledge alone, but in the courageous, persistent, and adaptable application of that knowledge. May you dare to apply what you know, and may wisdom be your guiding light toward a life of fulfillment, achievement, and greatness. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the year of transformation. This is the year where you have the opportunity to carve your destiny, chisel your character, and sculpt the best version of yourself. I am here to ignite the fire within you, to spark the passion that will drive you towards personal greatness. Let me share something profound. The key to your future lies in your commitment to personal growth. This year, I want you to embark on a journey, a journey of transformation that will elevate your life in ways you never thought possible. Are you ready? Firstly, let's address the power of mindset. Your thoughts are the architects of your destiny. It's not about what happens to you, but how you respond to what happens. The greatest power you possess is the power to choose your attitude in any given situation. Embrace positivity, cultivate a mindset of abundance, and watch how your life begins to transform. Next, it's imperative to set compelling goals. A ship without a destination will drift aimlessly. Similarly, a life without goals lacks purpose and direction. Decide what you want, set your sails toward that vision, and chart your course with unwavering determination. Goals give you focus, push your boundaries, and inspire action. Remember, a goal without a plan is just a wish. Equally crucial in this journey of transformation is the commitment to continuous learning. You must be a student of life. Invest in yourself through books, seminars, mentors, and experiences. Learning is the fuel for growth. It expands your horizons, challenges your beliefs, and equips you with the tools needed for success. As I always say, formal education will make you a living, but self-education will make you a fortune. Moreover, your associations will determine your destination. Surround yourself with individuals who uplift you, challenge you, and inspire you to be better. Your network is your net worth. Choose your associations wisely, for they will either propel you towards greatness or hold you back from your potential. In the pursuit of your transformation, don't shy away from failure. Failure is not the opposite of success, it's a part of success. Embrace failure as a teacher, as a stepping stone towards growth. Every setback is an opportunity to learn, to recalibrate, and to come back stronger. Remember, the only time you truly fail is when you refuse to get back up. Consistency is the hallmark of champions. It's not about making massive leaps in a day. It's about making small, consistent steps day in and day out. Success is the sum of small efforts repeated consistently. Stay committed to your growth, and over time, those efforts will compound into extraordinary results. 
Lastly, let gratitude be your guiding light. Gratitude unlocks the fullness of life. Be grateful for the lessons, for the challenges, and for the opportunities that come your way. When you appreciate what you have, you create space for more abundance to flow into your life. As we venture into this year of transformation, I urge you to seize this moment, take charge of your life, take control of your destiny, and craft the best version of yourself. Remember, the future belongs to those who believe in the beauty of their dreams. I'll leave you with this. Your life does not get better by chance, it gets better by change. Embrace this change, embrace this transformation, and watch how it unfolds the extraordinary potential that lies within you. Thank you, and may this be the year you unlock the greatness within you.